favorite intervention to promote healthy aging, certainly the most evidence-based intervention that we have. And that's um, exercise where um, we are kind of exercise evangelists. And even before our understanding of senescence, um, really it's ability to counter many of the different forms of age-related um, cellular and molecular damage. And um, there, there's some evidence and some of it might be controversial about exercise being able to prevent DNA damage or promote DNA repair, clearly restoring hormesis to mitochondrial health and function, um, stimulating autophagy and, and, and countering inflammation, there's strong evidence there. And then we think about the accumulation of senescent cells with advancing age. We think a lot of that has to do with this unhealthy cellular milieu where immune function is compromised for identifying and deleting uh, those senescent cells from a tissue. And we think exercise may play a role in promoting the clearance of these cells and ultimately having an impact on how many senescent cells we accumulate throughout the life course um, and, and in turn uh, preventing the onset of a host of age-related conditions that I've referenced throughout the talk. And I'll just show you a very simple example. It was almost a study of convenience um, that we uh, were fortunate to work on. We have an active older adults program at our, our, our um, work uh, place. And this was a study of 30 individuals that were 60 uh, years of age or older, relatively healthy, I would say, because they were participating in an active exercise program. So we assessed them before they started the program and afterwards. And in response to this, uh, this program, uh, not surprisingly, we saw improvements in strength, reductions in the time it took to do repeated chair stands, um, doing standard clinical measures of function, such as a timed up and go test. We see improvements there in these individuals. And importantly, uh, of course, patient reported outcomes of fatigue and well being and quality of life also improved in response to this intervention. And we took advantage of Ned Sharpless's assay, where he isolates CD3 positive T cells from the circulation as a biomarker of senescence. These cells are enriched for P16, so they're a little bit better um, in terms of signal to noise ratio for, for assessing um, senescence you know, signals, um, if you will. And what you can see here is that uh, we, we saw a pretty consistent reduction in many of the markers of, of not only just P16 signals and P21 signals, but activation of the CGAS sting signaling pathway in these individuals just 12 weeks after they participated in the exercise program. And, and of course, um, I can't claim that um, we reprogrammed the cells, but that's one possibility, or maybe there's kind of rejuvenation of, of these cells. And um, these are a different cell, pop, uh, you know, new cells that are, 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 are we're measuring here in these uh, exercised individuals. But I think it's a cool proof of concept. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of add one more example of a, a lifestyle intervention. We've um, just finished the analysis and we're putting together the story on calorie. So Zaira Aversa, uh, postdoc in my lab, has been hard at work on this study where calorie is a very fascinating study. It's the only kind of two-year longitudinal study in humans of caloric restriction. About 200 participants randomized two to one, two to caloric restriction for every one person assigned to an ad libitum diet. The goal was 25% reduction over the course of two years. The average is about 12%. So if you think about it, it's not dramatic, right? But it, it's, it's probably a meaningful amount of reduction. Uh, clearly conferred or conveyed many health benefits and cardiovascular risk and metabolic improvements. And um, we've looked at about 30 different biomarkers of senescence and we see about half of them are positively affected, even in these younger healthy individuals um, in terms of uh, the circulating abundance of different uh, biomarkers that we're interested in. And, and these are a little bit complicated graphs because they're measures in change, not necessarily abundance, um, but showing a, a significant effect of caloric restriction. On the right-hand side, we took advantage of some data from Deep Dixit, where he had a nice paper doing RNA sequencing on the adipose tissue of individuals who just participated in the um, caloric restriction arm. And you can see when we use this kind of uh, gene set that we recently published for senescence called SenMayo, um, we see uh, relative enrichment at baseline compared to 12 months and baseline compared to 24 months um, in individuals who underwent caloric restriction, suggesting that some of these different um, features of the molecular signature of senescence are benefiting uh, in the adipose tissue of these relatively young uh, middle-aged individuals.